Today is Tuesday, the 3rd of September. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we continue reading from John chapter 4, verses 50 through 54. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour when he began to get better. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The father knew that that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he himself believed and all his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. The continuing account of the nobleman shows us the love Christ sought to bring him. Jesus did not condone the infirmities of his faith. Rather, he chastised them. But he also did not reject the man's imperfect faith. Instead, he sought to purify it. As soon as the man had fallen into a great fear at the Lord's delay, Christ told him, Go, your son will live. This word penetrated the nobleman's heart, and there it proved its glorious divine power. For hardly had Jesus spoken it when, as our text says, the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. All of his doubts quickly disappeared. As firm as the man's faith then was, it awaited an even greater strengthening. At the seventh hour, that is, at one o'clock, according to our division of the hours of the day, the Lord told him his son was alive. When on the next day he completed his journey and drew near to Capernaum, his servants met him with the happy news, your son lives. When he inquired at what hour his son had improved, they answered, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. With joy, he recognized that the miracle of the sudden recovery of his son at Capernaum had happened at the moment that Christ, at a great distance, had said to him, Your son will live. Our text then says, And he himself believed, and all his household. The spark of his faith had become a great fire on his journey, and upon his return, when his faith was confirmed in the most glorious way, that faith was even further intensified, so that he preached to his own and did not cease until he had led all to Christ. Here we see the way every beginner in Christianity can be freed more and more from the wants and infirmities of his faith. The first and most important thing is that a Christian diligently hear and consider God's word, especially the gospel with its glorious promises. He must use it and let it penetrate his heart. Whoever wants to become stronger in faith must boldly grasp the promises God gives to all penitent sinners, comfort himself with them, build upon them and ground himself upon them as upon an unshakable rock. Furthermore, as the nobleman did not wait until he could see the fulfillment of the word of Christ, he be, but began to believe as soon as he received Jesus' firm assurance that his word would be fulfilled. So now, when a Christian hears the gospel, he must not wait even one moment to comply with it, but instead he must give God the glory. He must say, indeed, I, a poor sinner, have not earned grace and salvation, but only wrath and punishment. But because the gospel is the word of God and Christ, which cannot lie, 
I do not want my unworthiness to move me to make it a lie. I want to believe it until the hour comes when I will behold what I believed and enjoy that for which I hoped. The nobleman, the nobleman not only believed the word of Christ, but he also considered how Christ confirmed and fulfilled his word. In like manner, beginners in Christianity and all who are weak in faith must firmly hold to the word of the gospel and notice every way Christ confirms his word to them. When a poor sinner begins to cling to the word of Christ, he often feels no change at all for a long time. At first, he has the word of Christ without comfort and without power. But if in spite of this, he faithfully clings to the word, he will eventually discover that all light, life, power, and comfort truly lies in Christ's word. He will find that everything that everything the word promises does indeed happen, that it gives rest to the soul, peace to the conscience, comfort in distress and death, and strength for a victorious battle against the world, sin, and Satan. The Christian must note these experiences, and in this way his faith will grow stronger and more confident. Then, like the nobleman, he will be able to tell others what great things the Lord has done in his soul. He will seek to bring others to Christ, and he will continue to grow and persevere in the faith until he reaches the end of his life and the goal of his faith, the salvation of his soul. And we pray. Visit then this soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me, radiancy divine, scatter all my unbelief. More and more thyself display, shining to the perfect day. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.